This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is the second lecture on interest rate futures. Uh, it's chapter 20 of the paper P4 course note. And in the first lecture, which I hope you've listened to, I explained a bit about what the futures actually were. Um, but what we're going to do now in the second lecture is work through um, a very simple, a baby example of how we actually use the futures. And when you're sure that um, this makes sense, then we'll have another lecture and I'll go through um, a, a full example, uh, an exam standard one. So the baby example I'm going to do is on page 118 of the course notes. Uh, and it's example three. I'll say it's a very simple one. There are, uh, there are some more practical problems which we'll deal with later, but let's have a look at example three. Uh, it says today is the 3rd of October and interest rates are 8% per annum. We want to borrow 6 million for six months, but the loans are going to actually start on the 1st of January. And we're going to make use of futures. There are three month January futures available at 92. Well, let's go through bit by bit. First of all, let's do the bit I always do first, um, what I call a reference point. Um, what I mean by that, as we did previously with um, foreign exchange futures, um, is let's work out what the interest would be if interest rates didn't change, if it was uh, going to be at today's interest rate. So at today's interest rate, uh, we're borrowing 6 million. Today's interest is 8%, but that's a yearly rate. Our loan is for six months. And so 6 million, 8% for half a year, uh, the interest payable will be here we are, 240,000. However, that is only a reference point because, of course, the loan's not actually going to start until 1st of January. And by then, interest rates could have changed to anything. So, what are we going to do? Well, as of today, which is the 3rd of October, The loan itself, the transaction, will leave it at risk. So on the loan itself, we won't actually do anything. Uh, we'll, um, when we actually take the loan, we'll pay whatever the interest happens to be. However, to cancel that risk, to hedge against the risk, we're going to start a futures deal. And what futures deal are we going to have? Now, it says there are three-month January futures available. Um, but, as I've already explained, two things here. First of all, a January future, the only relevance of uh, the word January is that any futures deal must finish by the end of January. Well, we are going to finish the deal on the 1st of January when the loan starts, so a January future is fine. Uh, and the price, today's price, it's quoted at 92. Uh, secondly, remember, we can either buy futures today and sell them later, or we can sell futures and buy later. What are we going to do here? Are we going to buy or are we going to sell? Well, think this through. Remember, we are borrowing money. And what's worrying me is that the interest rate, although at the moment it's 8%, what worries me is that the interest rate will go up and we'll end up paying out more interest. And so the money we lose there, we want to make a compensating profit on our futures. But what's going to happen to the futures price if the interest rate goes up? If the interest rate went up to, I'm making up a figure obviously, but if it went up to let's say 9%, and we pay more on the loan. 
the futures price, remember, would go down. In a perfect world, 100 minus 9, the futures price would go down to 91. Well, higher interest means we're losing money in loan interest. We want to make a profit on the futures. And how can we make a profit if the current price is 92? How can we make a profit if the futures price were to fall? Well, the way we'd make a profit is surely we'd sell futures. Because if you sell futures at today's price of 92, buy them back later, and if the price is lower, you buy at a lower price, sell at a higher price, we make our profit. And in fact, if you're borrowing money, as we are here, and as almost certainly you will in the exam, if you're borrowing money, you'll always sell futures. By all means, learn that as a rule, but see why. It's awful just to learn a rule without any logic. However, there is one final problem. And the final problem is this. We are borrowing six million. We're at risk on the interest on the six million. We are going to use futures. But the problem is that if the interest rate went up, again, if it went up by 1%, then on the loan itself, uh, we'd be paying extra interest, 1% on 6 million for half a year. We lose six months interest at 1%. We're going to deal in futures, and again in a perfect world, if the interest went up by a percent, the futures price goes down by 1%. But the trouble is, if you remember, uh, and if you, if you didn't listen to the first lecture, do, the trouble is that the way we calculate profit on futures, you say, ah, if it's gone from 92 to 91, that's like a 1% profit. But it's always worked out for a quarter of a year, for three months. I kept stressing before, the only relevance of the word three months futures is that when they calculate the profit, they'll calculate it for three months. And so, a change in the futures price of one, that would, the actual profit we'll get, will only be three months at 1%. And of course, it's not going to balance. We want the profit to cancel out the extra interest, but the extra interest is six months, because the loan is six months, the profit on the futures would only be for three months, because they're three-month futures. So how are we going to deal with it? Well, the way we deal with it is this. We say the amount of the deal, well, the loan itself is six million. But given that futures will only give us three months um, interest, and yet the loan itself is six months, what we'll do is we'll deal in the futures, we'll deal twice as much. We'll multiply by six over three, 12 million, and you see 12 million, three months profit on that at 1% would be the same as the six million on the loan, six months extra interest at 1%. Now, if that's confusing you, if it's worrying you, be patient. Um, hang on for a, a few minutes, because when we come to actually look at what happens in January, I think then it'll be very obvious why we've done this. But in fact, we always do this. And as a rule, you always take the amount of the loan and you multiply by in general terms, the length of the loan in months. Here it's a six month loan. And you divide by three, it's always three uh, because the three month futures. So it becomes automatic and learn it. 
Uh, again, I always think it's dreadful to go into the exam purely having learned a rule without it making sense. Uh, but as I say, if, if it's still worrying you why, you'll see in one minute why that's useful. Anyway, what we're going to do, remember, we're at the moment, uh, we're today, the 3rd of October. The loan itself will do nothing. However, we'll start a futures deal, and the deal we'll have will sell... 12 million uh, pounds, 12 million January futures at uh, today's price 92. And remember, apart from the fact we have to pay a deposit, a margin, which in the numbers we actually ignore, uh, apart from that, though, there's no. Um, cash changed hands or anything, that was effectively a phone call. We've sold 12 million futures. Later, we're going to have to close the deal and buy them. And at that stage, we'll work out any profit or loss. We then sit and wait until the start of the loan, uh, which in this question is the 1st of January. And of course, it's only on the 1st of January that we'll actually find out what the actual interest rate is. Now, of course, it could be anything. But if you look back at the question, it says, assume that on the 1st of January, the interest rate has changed to 10%. And of course, from day to day, just as interest rates change, so too will the futures price. And it says, assume the futures price has changed to 90 And now let's see what will happen on the 1st of January. On the loan itself, we pay whatever the interest happens to be. And so the loan was 6 million. The interest is 10%. It's for half a year, six months. And so we'll end up paying interest of how much does that come to? 600, 300,000. On the same day, though, we'll finish our futures deal. Remember, we started by selling the futures. And so to finish the deal, we'll now buy them. And we'll calculate our profit or loss on futures. Well, I showed you in the first lecture how we do it. We take the amount that we uh, dealt in, which was 12 million. And to get the profit, we take the difference between the sell and the buy price. Well, we started by selling futures when the price was 92. Uh, we finished the deal today, 1st of January. We buy them when the price is 90. We then divide by 400. If you remember, it's 100 because uh, it's a percent. It's 4 because we're doing it for three months or a quarter of a year. But it's always divided by 400. So, how much profit do we actually make? Uh, sorry, it is a profit, I hope, clearly. Uh, 92 minus 90 is 2, divided by 400 on 12 million. The profit is 60,000. And so, although it's two separate things, obviously, uh, the net result is 240. And surely for this particular example, we've ended up with a perfect hedge. And that it's a day's interest rate of 8%, the interest would have been 240. The actual interest rate was higher, it was 10. So on the loan itself, we were paying an extra 60. But the futures, they gave us a compensating profit of 60. And so here, it is a perfect hedge. Now, of course, in real life, it won't be. It's the same reasons as before. I'll write them down in a moment. But now, for a moment, just pause and see why we needed to deal in 12 million. 
On the loan, we took half a year's interest, six months' interest. But the profit on futures, we're only getting three months' profit. And so, we multiplied by length of the loan over three, um, by gambling, by dealing in twice as much in 12 million, uh, the profit exactly compensated for the extra interest. Now, as I say, this was a perfect hedge. In practice, it's not going to be a perfect hedge. And the two reasons are exactly the same as with um, currency futures. Uh, firstly, there are fixed size contracts. We'll deal with that um, in a fuller example in the next lecture. Uh, but with fixed size contracts, even though here we wanted to deal in 12 million, it may not be possible to deal in exactly uh, the right amount. The second reason, much more important, is the basis risk. In the tier you see, everything was working what you might call perfectly. Uh, as at today, wherever we are, as at today, the interest rate is 8%. Um, the futures price was 100 minus 8, it was 92. By the start of the loan, interest had changed to 10 by 2%. And the futures price had changed by 2 to 90. Well, in real life, the futures price will change as the interest rate changes. But it, it, it won't be perfect. That, um, the problem will be that the change in the futures price will not exactly equal the change in the interest rate. And I hope clearly, if the two hadn't been exactly equal, then it wouldn't have um, hedged precisely. It wouldn't have been a perfect hedge. Now, I hope that made sense and explains how we are going to actually use the futures. Um, we'll pause there, but in the next lecture, um, we'll turn it into a full uh, exam standard example with all the complications in it.